Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Can't you see she's spitting nerdy? Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Hey guys, I went home to visit my dad for Father's Day and I got an opportunity, finally, to get in the gym and film a workout. So I asked you guys on Instagram what kind of workout you wanted and you guys voted for a full body workout. So today, we're doing... You guessed it, a full body workout. Full body workouts are ideal if you can only lift three or fewer days per week because they help maximize the frequency of muscle training and frequency is one of the key aspects in building muscle. If you hit a muscle, let's say your quads, with a certain amount of volume one day a week versus hitting your quads with half the volume two days per week, the increased frequency with the same volume will lead to more muscle growth. So if you have a limited amount of time or limited number of days that you can get to the gym, doing full body workouts allows you to increase your frequency, which increases the potential for muscle growth. So if you're like me and can only make it to the gym three days a week, this is a great workout for you. Before we get into the workout, I would really appreciate it if you would give this video a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel and lets me know if you like this kind of video and if I should make more of an effort to go back to this beautiful gym. Like, oh, oh my god, side note, by the way, this is the most beautiful 24-hour fitness that I've ever been in. Like, I've been to a bunch of different ones in LA. None of them compared to this one. It's just beautiful and amazing and has like an outdoor area and I kind of want to move back home home just so that I can go to this gym. What was I saying? I got distracted by by the thought of the beautiful gym. Oh yeah, thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Love you forever. Subscribe for more videos and hit the notification button so you don't miss any future videos. And yeah, without further ado, let's go lift some weights. Every time I go to the gym, I start off with a really quick list session just to get the blood flowing and get my heart pumping. I usually walk on the treadmill for about five minutes, but I also really like warming up with some light rowing or sometimes, occasionally, not very often, the Stairmaster. I like to do this just until I feel my body temperature start to increase. So like if I were wearing a sweatshirt, I would go until about I get warm enough to need to take the sweatshirt off. Not really trying to break a sweat, just get a little dewy, if you will, just get a little bit of a glow going on. Once you're nice and warm, feel free to do any other sort of warm up that you like to do before you lift. I like to go through the MAPS Prime Routine from Mind Pump, which is basically an assortment of exercises that get your body moving better for lifting and you can customize it based on your body and what you need. And I've been doing it since January and I love it so much. It takes three to five minutes and it makes my body feel so much more prepared to lift heavy. And these are just some examples, some exercises you can do to prime your body before a workout. some glute activation exercises for you. I always do some amount of glute activation specifically for my left glute since that's the one I have trouble connecting to. This first exercise is banded kickbacks on a ball. Keep your knee bent so that you can't activate your hamstring accidentally. It'll force you to really use your glute to lift your leg. You can do it on either side or just one side if you know that you have a weaker glute that needs to be activated before you lift. exercise is banded side plank abductions. Get into a side plank on your knee with a band around your knees and raise your top leg. This one will really activate your abductors or your side booty. And this one burns. So you can start without the band if it's too difficult with it. And remember, you're not trying to burn out your muscles. You're just trying to get them pumped up and warm. The last activation exercise is banded squat pulses. This also works the abductors because you have to push your knees outwards against the band in order to keep your knees in line with your toes. And then it also activates your gluteus maximus, AKA the big booty muscle because it's a squat and that is, that's, that's the booty muscle that's involved in the squat motion. Oh, by the way, the sets and reps for the activation exercises as well as the whole workout will be in the description box below. Now we're all warm, onward to the actual workout. I love starting off my workouts with some sort of compound movement, which is an exercise that involves multiple joints and muscle groups. Today, we're starting out with squats. The squat is probably the most foundational movement. Mastering the form and technique will not only help you build muscle much more effectively, but will also help prevent injury as you get older. I have a resource page with a bunch of videos and articles about how to do the five most essential lifts properly, so I will link that in the description and you can get like an in-depth view of how to properly squat. 
this workout is focused on hypertrophy, so make sure you pick a weight where you can do eight to 12 reps where the last two reps are really difficult, but you can still maintain good form throughout all the reps and all the sets. Next, we have the dumbbell chest press. This is also a staple compound movement. Start with the dumbbells at your chest, press them all the way up, and then make sure you go slow and controlled on the way down. If you can't control the downward movement, drop the weight. Well, don't don't drop the weight on yourself, please. That, that would hurt. I mean, lower, lower the weight. Pick a lower weight if you can't control the weight very well. And then also make sure your elbows don't flare out past 90 degrees. It's best to keep them a little below 90 to protect your shoulders. And if you're looking to up your push-up game, these should really help. chest press we are moving into the bent over barbell row this is one of my all-time favorite upper body exercises because it engages so many muscles throughout the arms and the back again another staple movement that everyone should be using in their routines references for the barbell row as well as the bench press are also on the info sheet that I'm linking in the description so make sure you check that out so that you can get your form absolutely perfect but TLDR grip the barbell bend slightly at the hips and pull the bar towards your belly button and the path of the barbell should follow roughly along the line of your quads. Really focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together at the top. Like there's a pencil between them and you're trying to squeeze the pencil. If you have a gym buddy with you and wanna make sure you're feeling it right, have them poke you right between the shoulder blades and think about pinching their finger. Once you're done, take a little dance break and repeat the set two more times. Next up, we have a superset. A superset is where you do two exercises back to back with no rest in between. For this one, we're doing good mornings and hip thrusts. Good mornings target the hamstrings and the glutes. They're essentially a Romanian deadlift, but with the bar on your shoulders. From standing, you're gonna push your hips back and hinge at the waist, like you're trying to push someone out of the way with your booty. Keep your legs fairly straight, you should feel a slight stretch in your hamstrings. I have to bend my knees a little bit more than most because I'm not super flexible, but basically don't lock your knees. A slight bend should be sufficient for this exercise if you're flexible enough to go through a whole range of motion like that. The bottom of the rep is when your back is parallel or almost parallel to the ground, and then on the way back up, focus on pulling through your hamstrings and glutes and really squeeze your glutes hard at the top of the rep. We're doing eight to 10 reps of the good mornings with as much weight as you can use while maintaining good form throughout all the reps. If you need to use a squat rack to get the bar on and off your shoulders, do it. Keep in mind that it's much harder to get the bar off than on. I made that mistake the first time that I tried it like this and was walking around with the bar on my back for what seemed like forever while I tried to figure out how to get it off me without injuring myself. Once you finish the good mornings, you're gonna go straight into hip thrusts. Start with the bar on your hips, back and thighs parallel to the ground and chin tucked. Keep your chin tucked throughout the whole movement to prevent lumbar hyperextension, i.e. arching your back too much. Your mid shoulder blade should be the pivot point on the bench. You're gonna hinge through your hips and knees as you lower the bar, not through your back. And on the way up, drive through your heels and squeeze your glutes. You'll notice that whatever position you're in, just in normal life, if you're sitting in a chair or you're standing, if you squeeze your glutes, it will automatically push your hips forward. That's the same feeling you want in your hip thrust. You want the glutes to be driving the movement. And then this is the one exercise that falls out of the 8 to 12 rep range. We're going to do 15 of these to activate a little bit more of a pump in the glutes. Take a little break, shake it off, and then you're gonna do the set two more times. Superset, we have a 
dumbbell shoulder press. Start with the dumbbells at your shoulders, palms facing forward with a good posture. From there, you're going to extend your arms straight up over your head. The dumbbells should travel in a relatively straight line, ending on top with your arms next to your ears. Make sure the movement on the way back down, again, is slow and controlled as well. This is a variation of another staple lift, the barbell overhead press. You get, get a theme here where we're going with the staple lifts that are really important, doing some variations of them. It's a great way to build a workout. Anyway, this specific exercise is a great lift to sculpt your shoulders as well as your back and arms. And then after your first set, you're gonna shake it out and repeat it two more times. Set. This time we're targeting the biceps and triceps. This is going to require a cable machine, but you can also do something similar with dumbbells, which I'll talk about in a second. But we're starting with cable curls. Drop the cable all the way to the ground and start with your arms fully extended. Keep your elbows at your sides and maintain good posture with a slight bend in your knees. And keep your body as stable as possible. Don't use momentum from swinging your body to get the weight up. If you feel yourself start to have to use your body and momentum rather than just your biceps to move the weight, lower the weight. Again, the movement should be slow and controlled. If you don't have a cable machine, you can substitute this move with regular dumbbell curls. And then once you finish your curls, you're gonna go straight into cable tricep press downs. Lift the cable up so that it's over your head. Try to pick a machine that isn't so stiff that you struggle for two minutes between exercises trying to lift it like I did. No idea why this machine didn't wanna cooperate and didn't wanna lift the cable up, but I, I got it there eventually. For the tricep press downs, again, make sure that you have a good posture and keep your elbows at your sides. Your shoulders should not be rotating at all. The elbows should be the only joint moving. Make sure that you get full extension at the bottom of the movement. Really squeeze your triceps to extend your arms all the way. This is an isolation movement, so the rest of the body should not be helping move the weight at all. This is one of my new favorite tricep exercises. I find that it isolates them really well and I can really feel the burn. For this one, if you don't have a cable machine, feel free to do dumbbell overhead tricep extensions or skull crushers. exercise is standing calf raises. Having defined strong calves will make your skinny jeans look even better and when you're in heels no one will mess with you because you'll look like you can kill a man. Also, it'll make your compound lower body lifts like the squat and the deadlift stronger so don't skip this exercise just because it's at the end of the workout and it's a little boring. To do these calf raises grab some sort of weight, kettlebell, plate, dumbbell, it doesn't really matter. You need some sort of platform also that's an inch or two off the ground. You can use a step like I did or stand on a squat rack or whatever raised platform you can find or you can also hold on to something. Being on a platform will allow you to get full range of motion. Position the ball of your foot on the edge of the platform and lower your heel all the way down until your calf is in a stretched position. And then drive through the ball of your foot to push yourself up on your tippy toes. You can see here that I'm really letting my heel go all the way down as far as it can and then pushing it all the way up. It's really easy here to just do it 90% of the way, but make sure you're really squeezing your calf at the top to push your body through the full range of motion. And that's it. I hope you guys liked this workout. If you give it a try, please let me know how it goes in the comment section below. Do hit that thumbs up button if you did like it and share this video with your friends and your family and your workout buddies so that you can do this workout with your workout buddies and subscribe for more future workout videos when I get back to that beautiful gym and I will see you very soon. Bye.